Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. I know you're going to want to talk about the NFL draft, and we'll do that. Sometimes we grade drafts by whether or not we've heard of the guy, and I'm pretty sure that nobody has ever seen Sione Takataki play football for BYU. In fact, you probably haven't seen BYU play since Jim McMahon played quarterback there. But I want to talk a moment about the Indians. If I told you they'd go down to Houston and get a split in their four-game series, I think you'd be happy. But not after winning the first two and failing to deliver in the clutch to get a third win. But right now, even without right-handed hitting outfielders, your argument that the Indians are only good because they're in a bad division, let me tell you this. After watching maybe the best team in the American League, Houston, I can tell you they want no part, any part, of the Indians starting pitching once October comes. Oh, by the way, Dr. Smooth, Michael Brantley, he's pretty good. Andy Baskin's pretty good. He's here tonight. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 23rd consecutive year and as always seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. My friend, my sometimes partner, uh, Andy Baskin, is here and from 92.3 The Fan. And by the way, you are doing a lucrative speaking engagement, I believe, at Kent State. Is that correct? At, I am. Uh, at the, uh, a fraternity Oh, uh, that was over the weekend. It was done already? Yeah, I didn't speak. It was in your well, paper. It was in the paper, and it said uh, Andy Baskin, it w I don't know who f the president put out this press release, and a Andy Baskin will be there. I think he's a sportscaster. That's rock-solid reporting. That's Kent State journalism for you, 101. <laughs> so I was there. Yeah, it was fun. All right. A lot of guys had a good time, I can tell you that. I wasn't one of them. I well, wanted to watch. you're too old to have a good time. I wanted to. The guys that were having the most fun were the guys older than me. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can, e you can email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Andy Baskin does a great job. How many years now? Seven or eight on... Uh, 800? No, <laughs> on the radio? Eight. We're coming three, up on nine. Coming up on nine? Coming up on nine years. Can you believe that? You were like in third grade when we started. I was. I was. All right. You memorized the draft. What do no, you think? No, I didn't memorize it. Look... We got a guy in Greedy Williams that I think people are excited about. That a the lot name of people, is great. Yeah, the name is great. Yeah. Um, so he didn't play in the bowl game. Maybe you're going to question that. Maybe right. you'll question your ethic there. But <clears throat> really, who's going to be mad about that? LSU fans and coaches that thought he might play in that. Look, if the guy's got a young kid and he's going to play and he's going to make some cash down the road, yeah, you got to be careful. I don't think it's worth getting hurt. No one's, I, you know, anybody mad at Bosa? Do you think that? No, well, they shouldn't be. No, for the same reason you shouldn't be mad at Greedy Williams. We had a guy from LSU on today that that wrote for the LSU website. Right. And he was like, well, you know, some people are going to question the fact that he didn't play in the bowl game. Who cares? I don't care. No, not not anymore. There used to be a time that it, it was the right thing to do, not not anymore. We live in the land of money. Yeah. And the NCAA doesn't care about anybody. So. All right, so you got Greedy. You know what? It, it's all it's old already. Is it? It's old already. Not Here's a list of the uh, first draft class. And uh, Greedy Williams. Then uh, Sione Takataki from, from uh, BYU. BYU. How do you feel about that? He's the only other. There are two controversial names in this thing. Okay. Takitaki, Taki, who had some trouble when he was an underclassman. Right. Got into a bar fight, and then he, he lifted some stuff from the girls' soccer team or girls' track team. Lifting like weights? No, like a couple sweatshirts or something. I, yeah. Come on. And then the fact they draft a kicker in the fifth round. Yeah, I didn't understand that at all. You can always get a peripheral guy, sign him in training camp if, if you don't like the Joseph, the guy you have. Well, at least you got competition. I, I yeah, really, but don't you think he automatically makes it because they picked him? Yes. I, but I think he's the front runner. But there's your man, Taki Taki. Taki Taki. I had that on uh, sushi the other day. You did? I did. Hmm. There you see uh, the amount of tackles and everything he did four years at uh, BYU. There's something to be said for that, by the way. Yeah, look, he was there, he, and he got in trouble when he was younger. But who, 
The things he got in trouble for, I don't know that he would have gotten in trouble at, at schools that weren't private. If he, if he wasn't there, I, I don't know. If he's not at BYU, maybe it's a different story. Jim McMahon set the standard for messing around at BYU. Yeah, that's true. But he was so too... it couldn't have been as bad as Taki Taki. As long as he didn't wear his sunglasses into class, I'm sure he'd be okay. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. Let's hear what you think about the draft. Um, I'm being told something. Uh -oh. There you go. We have breaking news. Sheldrick uh, red, red wine. wine. I had red wine with uh, steak. And how was it? It was, it was excellent. It was not as good as the Taki Taki, but it, it was it was good nonetheless. I, nonetheless? Nonetheless. Just with you. There you have it. All right, so you got a safety, you got defensive help again. And, you know, and Mac Wilson's another guy. What a normal name? Yeah, I'm sorry. Alabama, 61240. He's not happy. He's not happy that he was picked in the fifth round, especially you, you when you're playing that, for Alabama. Do you think that matters? It doesn't matter after you start playing games and right. once you start getting checks. Um, I do think the bonus money up front makes a difference for these guys. They want to get paid. They all want to get paid. But, you know, the dream of going to Alabama and automatically believing you're going to be a first rounder, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, so the class here you see the kicker, Austin uh, Siebert out of Oklahoma. Um, here's the classiest move of the week, maybe of, the, of this year, is Josh Rosen. Absolutely. And what he said, go ahead and tell people what he said. Basically well, no, he, what just, he, said. he thanked the people in Arizona and said, hey, we, uh, I appreciate my time while I was in Arizona. It was great. And by the way, I've got a two-bedroom apartment. Yeah, but he left out talking to uh, the guy, the, the Heisman Trophy winner who's taken his job, and he, was cla he, helped, he did it classily. Is that a word? Classily? No, I thought he handled it really well. I, yeah. You know, and— I mean, they said he was a bad teammate and all that stuff coming out of college. He's not was a bad he? team. No. no. Uh, what was the other— um, he was at a softball game, at a charity softball game on Saturday night in Phoenix. Right. And they gave him a standing ovation when he got there. So the fans get it. They understand it. You bring in a new coach. Coach wants his quarterback. Yeah. That's where you're at. A little pressure on that yeah. quarterback. No question about that. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Mike Massetta from Nature Stone will join us when we get back. We're going to find out what Mike is thinking. You can also follow us on Facebook. By going to facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine. New content is posted each and every day. We'll put your picture up. We'll uh, put what you say uh, up on screen. And we'll talk about it right here on more sports and less Levine. Seen exclusively on cleveland.com. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Here's the uh, birthdays for today. Louis Aparicio, Hall of Fame shortstop, played with the White Sox and the Red Sox. Bernie Parrish, seen and left, played in the uh, 1964 championship team for the Browns. 1947, Rich Lawyer. You know him in any uh, way? I think everyone knows a Rich Lawyer. Dale Earnhardt, senior or junior? Uh, 1980. It's be... uh, 1951. Kelly Shopik and Jay Cutler, all born Kelly on this Shopik. date, the 29th of, uh, of April. Oh, Kelly Shopik. What's that? Oh, we hardly knew you. <laughs> we hardly knew ye. 
216-575-0403. Let's go out to Nature Stone. We'll see if Mike uh, Massetta is hanging around. Michael, are you there? I'm here, Les. How you doing? Hey, All Mike. Right. Andy Baskin with us today. Hey, Andy. How are you? Good. I want to know what you're thinking. Yeah, what are you thinking? Because we got to talk. <laughs> we got to talk uh, draft, and we got to talk. Uh, and we got to talk uh, some Indians who split their four-game series with the Houston uh, Astros. So, uh, so what are you thinking? And by the way, wow, it's Nature Stone. <laughs> wow, it's Nature Stone. I yeah. love it. No, I, I, I mean, I, looking at the Indians first, the Sunday game, the, the, uh, game four, I don't understand why. I know Carrasco was breathing along for six innings, and that, that's fine. He got into the seventh, the leadoff guy gets on. Why not get your bullpen up and ready, you know, in case something were to happen and things were to go awry? I think he's afraid you of know, his bullpen. I, I guess so, but I love Terry Francona. He's an outstanding manager, but I, I just I, – some of the things he does with the pitching staff really really kind of bother me. If he'd have gotten up his, his bullpen and had a lefty and a righty ready, after Gurriel hit that double off the fence, you could bring the lefty in to pitch to Reddick. You don't have to walk him in that situation. And, and then, uh, you know, who knows what would have happened. As, well, as it turns out, you know, we walk him, you know, Carrasco hangs the slider, and, uh, uh, you, you know, we, we lose 4-1 to one and tie the series instead of winning that game. So Let's go you know, back I, a little. I, 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 I didn't like that move. I, I would have been prepared for the worst-case scenario, not the best-case yeah. scenario. Well, you know, I think we talked about it last week. I don't remember when it happened exactly, before or after Monday. But uh, that situation where... He uh, put Brad Hand in when he had a four-run lead going in the ninth inning, and mm -hmm. who, under the theory that you got to win games and you can win them, that's a bad theory if you're putting in your closer uh, the first game of a doubleheader, not uh, using him in the first game and not not having them for the second. So not only did he did he cost himself game one, but he cost himself game two also. That's exactly right. Yeah, why pitch your closer? When you're not in a closing situation and it's the first game of a doubleheader, you know, knowing that you would, might need to use them in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the second game. Yeah, yeah. And hey, it, Mike, it, you, me, and Andy should be able to hold a four-run lead in the ninth inning. <laughs> I can hold it. I just so. wouldn't be able to keep it. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the H after my name. Just don't forget, Mike, there's two things that every guy knows how to do, right? Manage a baseball team and cook a steak. That's all that matters. Sure. Yeah, we can all second guess managers the day after, but yeah, no, he's doing a great job. They're fifteen and twelve. They finally got their lineup back. When you when you see Lindor in that lineup, it changes the whole complexion of what's going right. on. Right. And uh, they actually look like a major league baseball team now, and I think they're going to be they're going to be fine. But uh, but yeah, he just you know things like that with the bullpen. I was always taught you know by my father at a very young age to prepare for the worst, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And, you know, that was a worst-case scenario uh, there that he could have been prepared for had he have had a couple guys up and ready to go in the bullpen. All right, let's talk about the Browns. What, uh, in your estimation, how they do over the weekend? Well, I, I thought they did great, personally. I mean, it's an interesting draft because they, they drafted, it seemed like to me, they drafted for me. And this is the first time that I could uh, say in, in, in at least my time watching the Browns, you know, and, and, and their draft uh, uh, scenarios, where they actually went into it with like a game plan, and they said, "Okay, we need to get a, a, a second cover corner to go with Ward. We need to get an inside linebacker so that you know, you know, if Schobert's available, we can now, you know, make, make a trade. We need we, these are the these are the kind of the needs, and and this is where the, the the players that were available, you know, for those needs kind of fell in the draft, and they drafted them, and and I, I thought that was great." Yeah, usually um, in the in the past the Browns had to somehow come up with a player and force them to be a starter. This this exactly. time, they, this time they they voted for backups because I mean Andy, what realistically where's a, a weakness, a, a huge weakness from one particular player and his position? Um, I, I mean I don't know what these rookies are going to look like in the NFL. I will tell you this about the draft, it's like there were mature adults in the room making the pick. I didn't walk out of this draft going, oh my God, they reached on that guy. Oh my God. We had to trade a pick to get six picks in the sixth round. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to worry about Julio Jones. I'm not going to worry about guys that are going to be picked after what the Browns had to do. They went out and got Odell Beckham Jr. in the first round. That's really what they did. Yeah. If you really want to look at it, that's what they did. And they didn't mess around. They knew what they wanted to do. The only thing that people might question down the road is, why did you draft a kicker in the fifth round? 
Yeah, that's a question. Uh, we don't get it, or I and, don't get it. And by the way, there's no guarantee your sixth round or seventh round pick is going to make the team because you actually have some depth, a little bit of depth, and some talent on this team. That's the Got difference. It. I don't. I don't know about the Seabird uh, uh, kicker. But it seems to me he would have been available as soon as the draft ended and you could sign free agents, rookie free agents. And my guess is nobody else was going to pick him. They liked him. If he was the highest guy on the board for them, they took yeah. him, and that's where they are. All right, Mike, looking at this uh, team, what do they now need to, to, to I, I don't know, forage the fields here and come up with somebody? Or are they okay in your mind? Well, I think they're fine. You know, for, if they were to stay pat as they are right now, they can go into the season. I think they could be very, very good. Um, I want I'm, I want to see how the Duke Johnson uh, uh, scenario shakes out, and I want to see how the Joe Schobert, uh, quite frankly, scenario sh uh, shakes out. They drafted that the linebacker from Alabama, uh, who you know is six one two forty, a very athletic guy. I think he led Alabama in interception and as well as tackle. So I mean that's a, that's a heck of a draft pick that you're going to be playing as, as as your three down linebacker, assuming that you know he, he's everything is advertised, but as your three-down linebacker in the middle uh, in today's NFL with the, with, the, with the passing game. So what do they do with, uh, with, with Schobert? Uh, that, that, those scenarios, I think, need to play out a little bit, and then once those scenarios play out, then we'll kind of have an idea if they're going to go and start making moves and bringing, bringing uh, some other guys in. But quite frankly, I don't really see a position that, that is you know, up for grabs, so to speak, in terms of uh, – uh, talent. There's the talent at each position is, is very, very good. You can always get better on the defensive front. Uh, you know that you always want backups, so that you're constantly rotating guys and keeping them fresh. So that that may be something. Certainly secondary. Um, in today's NFL, you want to keep getting better in the secondary, so you can cover with in, in, in your dime coverages and things like that. In your matchups are 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 equal. You know when 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 teams go to three and four wide. But uh, but short of that, I I. I I really like the direction of this team. I think they're going to be very good. There's some rumors out of uh, out of uh, Tampa Bay concerning uh, Duke Johnson maybe going there in a trade. I think we've uh, got an opportunity to look at that. And uh, what do we? Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Maybe we just made up the rumor, Andy. Maybe you it's did happened. just make it up. It's a late afternoon rumor. Yeah, there it this is. rumor. Here's the rumor. We're talking about uh, McCoy here. He's 31 years old. Nine NFL seasons. 28 tackles last year and uh, six sacks on the year, 297 tackles in his career, third overall pick in the 2010 draft. You interested in uh, McCoy? For Duke Johnson? Yeah. I don't know. After listening to what they had to say yesterday about, or two days ago, about Freddie saying that Duke He's was there. a part of the team and they needed him here, and I still think you're going to have to wait. You got, and what are you doing for the first eight weeks of the season? Nine games of the season? No, you can't, no, you can't assume that... Uh, uh, that he's going to be back in in playing condition. Kareem Hunt. Uh, who knows what he's going to look like? About, yeah, Kareem Hunt. Yeah. I don't know what he's going to look like. You ready to get – I didn't think he was going to make it through the weekend, I'll be honest with you. Why? I thought No, I thought Duke Johnson was going to get oh, traded. Oh, Duke Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. And you're right, Freddie Kitchen sounded like the, he's a big part of the team. I wonder if that's a good thing to do if they really intend to trade him, is, if, it's, if that's a good thing to say. To say that he's a part of this team? Yeah, I mean, Freddie's just learning the ropes, not just coaching football at the head coaching level, but – but also uh, learning what to say and what not to say. It's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, he can only coach who he's got on his roster. That's true. All That's right, uh, yeah. Michael Massetta, do you have anything to uh, expand upon here as we uh, as the uh, court proceedings continue? <laughs> well, just in, in, into what, what uh, um, uh, Andy's point was with Kitchens, he, he, it's not up to him whether or not they get rid of Duke Johnson. So all he could do is say, "Yeah, he's a big part of my team." He's, you know, he was here last year. He's a good, good player, and hopefully right. he's, he's back and he does a good job. But Un he, unless he's, he's told gone, otherwise, then he's, then he's gone. And, yeah. you know, then he'll, he'll say something else. Yeah, and, and, and in case that Dorsey's uh, trying to set up a trade or uh, pop up the, the value a little bit, if he doesn't hear from Dorsey, he's got to say exactly what he said. Exactly. That, yeah, exactly right. Make the guy feel good because if something doesn't happen and they do keep Duke Johnson or they work things out, you want him to feel good about himself and have a great season, you know. I'm wondering what the dynamic in the locker room is going to be like, though. With Duke? Well, yeah. you've got Duke, you've got Odell, you've got Baker Mayfield. You've got some personalities in yeah. there. I mean, look, if they take a baseball bat to the uh, thermostat, then you know we got a winner. That's the wrong sport. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
All right, Mike, we will talk to you uh, a week from tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Hey, my pleasure, guys. Thank you, too. Take care. Thanks, I'll talk Mike. to you soon. This Saturday, it's Kentucky Derby Day at Northfield Park. Watch and wager on the uh, top thoroughbreds as they compete in the $2 million run for the roses. The ninth uh, annual Northfield Park Food Truck Festival kicks off at 12 noon. You got the hat contest, the Kentucky Derby hat contest. You can win $100 uh, on uh, betting games. Northfield uh, Kentucky Derby gift cards as well as uh, concert tickets and the grand prize of $2,500. Doors open at 9.30 in the morning and live racing begins at 6 p.m. All in Northfield Park where it's free admission, free parking every day. Andy Baskin and I return in a moment. More sports and Les Levine exclusively on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone, right here in Northeast Ohio, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and always affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of April and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Every player that's drafted in the National Football League, is, all the information is gathered by the 32 teams probably equally. And uh, I don't think we made this decision based on any uh, one bit of information that we got. We made the decision based on what was on tape um, and from talking to the kid and getting to know him a little bit. Uh, and that's what we made the decision based off of. We try to make decisions based on what's on tape. Um, you know, that's how I learned it. I know that's the way John uh, likes to approach it. And uh, you know what? Just tell me what kind of football player he is, because uh, ultimately all this is all good. But ultimately, they got to show up on Sunday and play the game, and uh, that's what we try to do. I mean, we're always trying to get better. Um, when the draft's over, we're going to try to get better. So it's a never-ending process. You know, I do think uh, again, it goes back. Everybody this time of year wants to talk about the roster and wants to crown somebody, but. Um, all this is good, okay? But this is not going to win us any games. Um, this is not even going to win us a quarter. It's not going to do anything for us but set us up for failure if we don't have our head on straight and we're ready to play football because the games are going to be won and lost in September. All this other stuff is fluff, all right? It's just things for people to talk about in April and May, all right? You're going to have a different narrative come September. All right, and that's when we want to control the narrative, not in April and May. Uh, you want to run through the wall for him? Yes, he's the guy you want to play for. How many, kidding? How many hats do you think he has? Brownie Brown's the Elf hat? Yeah. Um, uh, who has more, Brownie the, uh, Kitchens with Brownie the Elf or Dorsey with uh, Cleveland Brown sweatshirt? I think uh, there's only one rotating sweatshirt for oh, John Dorsey. The whole, the whole no one has more hats than LeBron James. Do you realize that when LeBron was a rookie, <laughs> He yeah. had a guy that was a hat guy for him. That's all he did was get him hats. That was his sole job, hat guy. That's unbelievable. And now he's one of his uh, one of his big guys. Around did us. you think that, for, <laughs> not on that uh, particular uh, video, but on what he did say over the weekend that he was, he thinks there's some kind of a something going on between the media and the players and the team. Did you catch that at all? I didn't know. Where he's trying to say you guys are always trying to do such and such. Well, he's got to learn. No, they're not trying to do such and such. 
They're there to cover the team. They'll figure it out. <clears throat> it's not a big – I mean, he's a rookie coach, and he's going to figure out a lot of these things as they go along the way. But he does get it. He's right. We need something to talk about in April. And the fans are loving the fact that this team on paper looks really good. And also, my guess is in the last, I don't know how many years, Kitchens is inheriting the best personnel that any new coach has inherited, I Without think. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. He's just got to make sure that he maintains – the bus driving forward. That's what he's got to do. Continue to do what he did on offense. He really doesn't have to worry about the defense much. He'll have to take the blame if there's problems. But, right. you know, no one's expecting him to be the greatest defensive coach do, on earth next year. Do you, th do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that he's calling his own plays and maybe taking away from what a head coach does on the other side of the ball? I think it depends on the coach. If the coach can handle it, then that's okay. It's what he knows how to do. How many times, <laughs> excuse me, how many times have you worked for somebody that got promoted from another job, and this new job has all these other implements to it that they don't really understand. So what do they do? They go back to what they know how to do. He knows how to call plays, so let him do it. I think he knows how to call plays. He was successful for half a season. To, yeah, but you got to decide: Are we going to punt the ball if we don't make this first down? Are we going to uh, go for first, go for four on fourth down? You got to make those decisions. You know, calling X's and O's is a little bit different than. At, at the way the game moves up and down the field. You worried about this? Yeah. All right, which maybe you should be. Okay. Maybe you I'll, should be. I'll tell you what, let me just, before we take a break, I want to make mention of uh, John Havlicek, who passed away yeah. ago, over the weekend at the age of 79. He was my favorite player because somebody said, well, how can you root for a Boston guy? I said, well, when I was learning to watch games, we didn't have the Cavaliers. We didn't have a team that, that the Celtics beat. Um, it was just the team that you saw every every Sunday afternoon, and and he was the best. I was surprised he's still the, although it makes sense because I can't think of who would be better, but he's still the leading scorer in Boston Celtic history. Larry Bird would probably be the other guy you would yeah, think of. but I, I think Havlicek had more. Uh, the other thing. I, I You know, it's funny. I liked him for the same reasons you did, and because he was an Ohio State guy. Right. I mean, that was why. when I, Because we saw the Celtics every week. <laughs> Or, sure. or almost every week on TV is what it felt like. And, and the other thing is that uh, he he was drafted in the seventh round by the Browns. And as as a quarterback, turned out to be, they tried him as a uh, uh, tight end. And uh, at the end of camp, he made it to the last cut, and then the Celtics decided to up the ante, and that turned out to be good for the Celtics, for Havlicek and the Browns. But Paul Brown, you know, um, uh, Bill Belichick gets credit for finding guys like that. Paul Brown did that in 1962. And invented that playbook. Yeah. 216-575-0403. When we get back, we'll look at the rest of the AFC, see what they did, see if you think they've improved, and uh, we'll check that out. Andy Baskin with us. More sports and less Levine continues. We're halfway through on Cleveland.com. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT. Today is the 29th of April. Roger Clemens sets an uh, MLB record with 20 strikeouts in a game. I'm sure he didn't have any extra support uh, legally no. or illegally. 
The Red Sox defeated the Mariners by a score of three to one. Couldn't even pitch a shutout, strike it out. That's weak. Funny. It is weak. That is weak. Andy Baskin. Next thing you know, I'll be testifying. Right. Andy Baskin, 92-3, the fan, is with us, uh, along with uh, Jeff Phelps. Well, Jeff Phelps is not with us, but he does the show with In Jeff spirit, Phelps. he's with us today. In spirit, he's always with us. No question about that. All right, uh, the AFC North, you got to be concerned. You concerned about uh, Cincinnati to, uh, or Baltimore or Pittsburgh? What what concerns you? I don't, Cincinnati might be better because Marvin Lewis isn't there anymore. Ah. So that might be, I mean, if you want to be optimistic about it. Um, I, you know, the Ravens always draft well and the Steelers are a good football team, even though they've got craziness going on over there. With Ben Roethlisberger, you're not going to count them out. No one has anointed the Browns the best team in the AFC North other than prognosticators. Right, and what do they know? So, you know, we had um, we were listening to Pharrell on the bench, who's on CBS, and I'm, I'm kind of friends with. Um, you know, he kind of ripped into the Browns a little bit on I his heard show. Him. He was absolutely right. He, everything he said was yeah. right. We well, haven't done anything basically yet. Basically what he said is don't anoint them until they do something, and they were 7, 8, and 1. Which is something compared to well, 0 and 16. That's true. But they haven't won a thing yet. No, they haven't. And Fre that's why I like Freddie. I mean, what you played last segment, he's gro <laughs> Excuse me, they're grounded. He's grounded. We may not be grounded. We're sitting around talking about them winning 10 games. Well, he, he didn't go through 0 and 16. Which is good. Or 19, since 1999, he didn't go through it. We have. He hasn't. I told you, a friend of mine ran into John Dorsey. And he said to Dorsey, I've never been happier you know, than I am right now with this team. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. And, and, he, and he looked at him and he kind of just said, good, enjoy it, and don't be afraid of it. Huh. Don't be afraid of it. And I thought that was a really interesting take. To come back because if you really want to change a culture, you've got to get rid of all those just the feeling of losing every Sunday. Right. The that's, NFL doesn't think so. You're not at one o'clock every Sunday anymore. That's true. Let's check out uh, the AFC North. We'll start with Pittsburgh. <laughs> see what they did in the draft. See what they came up with. And again, unless you really study these things, Andy, you do, you you know the big guys from the big schools and all that, but you don't know most of the. Devin Bush is a great pick. Yeah, I mean the top three picks, Justin Lane, we know because he's from here, um, but. You know, Deontay Johnson's going to have a lot of pressure on him uh, because you got some big shoes to fill. Maybe some crazy shoes, <laughs> but some big shoes to fill. So we'll see what he can do. But, you know, Pittsburgh always does such a good job at drafting, and they're not scared to leave, you know, our area. Look, Akron, uh, Toledo, Michigan, Michigan State. They I mean, almost always do that. Yeah. Ryan Shazier, unfortunately, what happened to him. But still, uh, He's got, they got a good name here, too. Isaiah Bugs from uh, Alabama. He's bugging. Yeah. All right, let's move on, see what uh, what's going on here with the Baltimore Ravens. Marquise Brown was a big pick, wide receiver. Jalen Ferguson, Miles Boykin, and uh, the list goes on and on. And uh, Trace... Uh, Trace McSorley. Trace McSorley. State. Yeah, so we ended up with uh, Purdue's quarterback, and they'll end up with Penn State's quarterback. Right. Ours won't ever see the field. All right, uh, the Baltimore, uh, or, I'm sorry, the Cincinnati Bengals go with Jonah Williams and Drew Sample. Jermaine Pratt was a name that we heard quite a bit about in conjecture about the Browns. Mm -hmm. And uh, that goes on and, and Michael on. Jordan, that's all that matters. Michael Jordan. Thought he gave it up to play baseball. It's not the same basketball player, is it? No, it's his sister. <laughs> Come on. All right, wow, so NFL.com. <laughs> They graded by a curve, actually. Yeah, what kind of curve is that? Uh, pretty good one. A minus for the Browns and the power rank rankings now with all of the teams. They've got the Browns as the 10th best team, Baltimore number 13, Pittsburgh 18, and Cincinnati 30. What does that, that mean, Les? Well, it means the Cincinnati pick has taken over the former Cleveland Browns pick. Good. I'm glad it's somebody else in who's the getting rankings. the bad press right now. Absolutely. So there you have it. When we come back, we'll check out the uh, Facebook question of the day and we'll continue our talk about what's going on. That comes your way exclusively on Cleveland.com. Concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of April and get up to half off. 
Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Let's check out uh, this date in Les Levine history, Andy, April 29th, 1959. Students at Roland School tried to impeach Les as uh, captain of the safety patrol. He got caught chewing gum in class. I saw, I remember that day, they were all chasing you down Bayard. Yes. I saw that. And yeah. then they almost made it back to Warrensville Center, but Well, I had diplomatic immunity at that point. Oh, you did? As the chair, as the... Uh, Head of the safety patrol. Yes, you jumped the fence and went into open. Time, time for a how come quickie, Andy. How come a baseball player can hit a four bagger when there are only three bags on the field? You have an answer for that? I don't. I have some jokes that'll get me in trouble, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. 216 Sokolowski's University Inn. You know what they have coming up on June 2nd? A wine tasting event. Really? Wine coupled with their great food at Sokolowski's. You gotta call them or go to the website, find out how you can get in at it. And every year it's tremendous. <coughs> it's the uh, wine tasting uh, event. event at Sokolowski's University Inn. That's coming up on June the 2nd. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. We asked a question for our question of the day, Andy, and that, uh, of course, on Facebook. Here's the question. How would you grade the Browns in the uh, 2019 NFL Draft? So we start with Glenn Berger. I really think it's too early to grade the Browns' recent draft picks, but I like the picks on the defensive side of the ball. B-plus at this point. Carl Brunstetter, B. It looks on paper as if they drafted some good depth and some possible future players. Rick May... <laughs> A B plus. We got help in the defensive backfield and at linebacker. Picked up an additional offensive lineman, and we may actually have competition for place kicker this season. Dorsey appears to have checked all the boxes. Now it's time to turn this into a competitive team. Dennis Davis, uh, Davis says, uh, <coughs> "Excuse me, solid B. Major improvement to the defensive backfield." Ed Watkins says it's got to be between an A and a B. That would be a B plus. Yeah. Uh, or A minus. The team needs to bolster its defense, and that's what Dorsey attempted to do. Of course, the proof will come this fall. And finally, Carl St. John, ask me again in three years. That's actually probably the right answer. Yeah. I got in a big uh, brouhaha today with some listeners and some folks on Twitter. What happened? Um, I, you know, Cybert, I think is how you say it. It's yes. Cybert, Cybert. I think it's Cybert. I think it's Cybert, too. Okay. So I just said, look, <laughs> this kid can punt, too. Why can't you do both? I think I got Don Cockroft did it. on the radio well, for that. Did anybody mention Don Cockroft? Yeah, Jeff did. Anybody mention Steve Cox could do Steve it. Steve Cox did it also. I didn't say that on the air. I remembered it now, but yeah. I didn't remember it earlier. Cockroft was good in both both cases. And, Why and can't you just do both? It gives you an extra Spot place on the, on the roster. roster. Yes. You know, you had in the '60s when they won in '64. You had Gary Collins, who was a wide receiver, and the punter for that team. Um, Someone's going to do it. It's going to it's going to be a trend again. Well, I'm Someone's surprised Belichick hasn't done it. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, these guys kick. That's what they do all day. <coughs> That's it. That's it. That's Here, it. Here, go in the corner and kick for an hour. Take 15 minutes and try to punt. What there, am I missing? There's no coordination with the holder. You just go kick the darn ball. I, I don't get it either. Okay, good. We're the only two. Maybe I'm the, maybe I'm the oldest man alive. Maybe. I was getting crushed today. By who? Why? Oh, you know, What's uh, the argument against it? High school hockey, or high school hockey. High school soccer guy calls in, or high school former kicker calls yeah. in. 
well, the swing plane is much oh, different on. for the punter than it is for the kicker, so on and so forth. So I was just like, whatever. And think how much money that guy could make. Yeah. For both kicking both. Well, Janikowski just uh, retired. Yeah. He made a lot of money. He did. You think he's a Hall of Famer? Kickers, kickers don't make it much. Ray Guy did, didn't he? Michael Ray Guy made it? Yeah, Michael Ray Guy and Ray Guy. <laughs> Ray Guy. I don't know that Ray Guy did it. Now i got to look. It's going to drive me nuts. Check it out. Is Ray Guy in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> yeah, Sandy. If you have the same Siri I have, you'll never get that answer. You'll never get it. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, I'll keep going. 216-575-0403 is the yes. number to call. He is in the Hall of Fame? Yes, I think. There you go. Hmm. Is oh, this Anderson? is great television, let me tell you. Is Morton Anderson in it? Place kicker? No, what were you just... I'd forget about Sit it. Sit here. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather go to the phones. If yes. They... Let's go to Bill, who's in North Homestead. Bill, how are you? Hey, Bill. Good, guys. Uh, yeah, Ray Guy is in the Hall of Fame, and the only place kicking he did, he kicked off uh, as well as punted. But he did not kick Bill Gold. George Landa did for most of that time period he was around, and okay. somebody else came in. Um. Actually, last night, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk to uh, before I got into some baseball was some memories of John Havlicek. Uh, I know you were a Boston Celtics fan when, before the Cavs had a, a team, as was I, major Celtics fan. Yeah, but, I mean, Michael we never, Russell, they, Lincoln, they, but, uh, they never broke our hearts like other teams have done. Yeah. And Although, one of the things Bill. That I remember mostly about Havlicek, I think it was Dick Barnett, the old Cleveland Piper, said that, he had three lungs, and that's how he could uh, run and you know play uh, every minute of every game and just never stop. But uh, at the time, he was my favorite uh, basketball player, my second favorite athlete, and I just uh, I thought the world of him. And I remember when the Cavs had a night for him. I think Pete uh, Franklin emceed at uh, at the Coliseum, and uh, he was loved here. Now I, I know when uh, he was at Ohio State, that had to be a couple of years before you got down there. Yeah. But uh, that was when I had my first interest in basketball was the Lucas Knoll and Havlicek years uh, down at Ohio State. He was he was something else. Yeah, he he was tremendous. He was a tremendous competitor. They, where he did hurt the Cavaliers though was in when um, the miracle of Richfield, and then Jim Jones breaks a bone in his foot, and then it was Boston that beat him, but it beat the Cavaliers, and that was a, a Havlicek. I think it was his last championship, but. Um, they played one of the classic games in the history of the N NBA uh, because the Cavs didn't make it to that round, and that was the game against Phoenix, a three-overtime game won by Boston. Do you remember that game? Oh, the Garfield heard shot that tied it yeah. up after uh, Paul Westfall had the uh, uh, intentional uh, technical foul so that the uh, so that mathematically, the yeah, up. mathematically they'd have a chance by that. Day. Yeah, I yeah, forgot that was about an that. Unbelievable that, game. Yeah. But, uh, All right, you want to yeah. talk baseball. What do you got, Bill? Well, actually, you kind of took my thunder earlier. Uh, I, I didn't have any problem because I knew we couldn't afford uh, Miller and, and Allen. And while I like Chisholm Hall and I like Gomes, it, it was okay to part them. But it just actually hurt watching Michael Brantley do what he does. His approach in hitting, his swing, his professionalism, his ability to play left field, very effectively. Uh, it just hurts so much to have lost him for apparently a couple million bucks a year. Well, but and think I'm of sure. what they paid him beforehand. In the year that he wasn't going to play, they just they paid quite a bit of money. for. That's what they were yeah. thinking. And don't you think probably they were concerned that he might get hurt, but sure. boy, would he look great in our lineup. Edward yeah. Diaz uh, didn't like that deal. I, you know, I understand all those other deals. I've certainly been a a proponent of Dolan, uh, anybody that complains about him spending money. Uh, I don't see anybody else lining up to buy the Indians. And, you know, we're the 49th largest city. I think Cuyahoga County's got, there was something in the Flame Dealer, 1.2 million people here. No, Cuyahoga uh, has 2.3. Well, I think in the paper it was 1.2 in Cuyahoga County. But anyhow, uh, when, when you think about having three sports franchises and all these other growing cities, we're, we're kind of lucky to have what we have. And uh, I don't know. We're, like I said, nobody's lining up to buy the, the Indians. And if they did, they'd probably want to move them. So be happy with what you have, folks. Yeah, and now, especially those of us who lived in the 60s, 70s, 
80s and early 90s, uh, how bad well, they were. You, you know now that, uh, you know, Forbes is rating them about uh, a billion two, something like that. So I'm, I am surprised there aren't people lo lining up because that's doing nothing but getting bigger and bigger. Bill, as always, great to talk to you. We'll uh, hear Good from you soon. You, this Saturday, it's Kentucky Derby Day at Northfield Park. Watch and wager on the top thoroughbreds as they compete in the $2 million run for the Roses. The ninth annual Northfield Park Food Truck Festival kicks off at 12 noon until 7 p.m. You can enjoy the live music from 1 until 10. Enter your Kentucky Derby hat contest for a chance to win cash and uh, register for your chance to win prizes all afternoon long. It's all in Northfield Park. Live racing begins at 6 exclusively at Northfield Park where it's free admission and free parking every day. Andy Baskin and I return one more time. Where did the time go? We are seen exclusively on uh, Cleveland.com. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate so no mold or mildew. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of April and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Tomorrow night, the great Bud Shaw, WKYC.com, will join us. You see us live on Cleveland.com from 6 until 7. Then you can archive it all day long, all year long, whatever. It's incredible technology. You can also follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com, slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. All right, Andy, you check the uh, TV homes, which is how they rate uh, size of markets. Yeah, it, and the, you got Cleveland, Akron, and Canton. What do you have as the number? 18. I mean, we're the 18th biggest television 18 market biggest. in the country. I thought he said we're the 49th biggest city. Is he talking about Cleveland? I, well, I was kind of confused. That there. could be because I think Columbus has passed them up, but Columbus, basically, Franklin County is all. Oh, all it, it, it's bigger than Franklin County. Yeah. Time to check out some emails, that, that some uh, quickies that were sent in. Mr. Gullible has sent in uh, oh, good. a couple. How come irony is the opposite of wrinkly? Yes. How come when you're down by the sea and an eel bites your knee, that's a moray? That's Don't so shoot the messenger. <laughs> so uh, this, this is Mr. Gullible says, how, of all the quickies I've submitted, this is the most recent. That is the oh, most recent quickie. Yeah, like, yes. like we haven't heard that one before. All right, here we go. This is what we all wait for. John Patrick writes, and he sends in, Andy, he sends in two quickies. Every day. Every day. Some are excellent. The problem is he had an excellent one and a bad one, so that takes the, the grade down. And, and I'm afraid if we give him a 10, which he might deserve, he might just say, that's it, I'm tipping my cap and walking away and okay, not sending Okay, so no 10s, in. can't be a 10. Well, if it's really a 10, like this one. How come corduroy pillows are making headlines. It's pretty good. Okay, hold off, because we grade yeah. them as a, as, a, as a team. Okay. How come coffins come with a lifetime guarantee? Seven? If, I didn't, if I didn't tell you that we don't want to give them a 10 yet, would you have given them a 10? I don't, people were dying to hear that last one. So. <laughs> 
That was bad. Separated at birth, Baker Mayfield and Austin Siebert. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him. Have you seen him? Didn't we have a picture of him up before? Maybe we did. I think we had an Austin Siebert. All right, what did you think of the draft and all? All in all. Well, since there, there weren't many recognizable names, my first thought is... There you go. There you go. No, I don't think he looks like Baker Mayfield. Do you? Same smile, maybe. Well, then they could... Here's another thing. Let Baker <laughs> kick. Yeah. Now you could take up three spaces That'd on the great. roster. That'd be great. Quick kick. Every play. Go Quick for kick it on is fourth a down. great play. I know it's a great play. No one ever uses on, it. Not on fourth down. On third down? Yeah. Like, if you're in punt formation, or if you're in uh, formation with the quarterback uh, standing back to get the ball, and they snap it to him and he kicks it, okay, that's fine. Um, but it's... More unpredictable on th on third down. If you're back in, I agree. if you're at your own thirty and it's third and thirty, why wait till fourth down to kick it? I actually think you're better off doing it if you're inside your own twenty. Okay. That's where I think the time Fair to enough. do it is. Fair yeah. enough. All right. Uh, Again, what do you think of the draft? I keep asking you this question. Uh, what'd you, how'd you think I, Nashville did? Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. How Nashville did in the draft, or how, how they did? did no. yeah, how they do as a city? How would we do compared to them? All right, let's. We'll talk about that momentarily. But I, I, I liked it because if you just attach the position to what they did and where the guys ranked, I think they did a good job, and that right. they certainly know more than we do. I agree with that. So until what, they, what, I needed DBs and linebackers. That's what they got me. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I, I don't. There's not really. This was. The schedule release was more exciting than the draft. No question about it. And so that just means your team is coming of age. So do you want to do you want to host the draft next year when you, hopefully you don't have uh, any uh, top spot? Do we already know draft? who has it next year. No, I don't think I we don't do. Th Las Vegas. <coughs> oh, yeah, Las, Las Vegas. Vegas has it next year. That's what I thought. Um, it's going to be tough to top that. What one can too. they do? Nothing. There's nothing to do there. <laughs> They shut it down at like 9 o'clock every night. So Anthony Lima or somebody decided 600,000 people were at Nashville. That's what Nashville said, 600,000, over the weekend. Okay. Well, I, I think it's bogus because it would have to have an, it'd have to be an uneven number. You oh, need to have an 500 or 700,000 would have been better. Yeah, or, or 7.5, something like that. Um, they did a great job. Where would you do it if it was in Cleveland? Well, I, I think the Hall of Fame would have to be involved. I don't know. I think the, the I think this whole Cleveland Canton thing is why we didn't get it. What do you mean? Because <coughs> Canton's not done. It can't right. Canton's not right. One hundred percent done. But it will be next year. Yeah, I still don't think. I, I think that if you're going to do it, just be let Cleveland do it. All right. Where would you do it? I would do it at Public Square, and then the party would be down Euclid, by the new Euclid, because there's all that stuff going on right there. And then it curves around to East Fourth, and then you just you have giant monitors all over the place. I mean, that's how we would look like Nashville did. And by the way, think about remember when they opened the casino and they animated the building? Yeah. You, why couldn't you animate the building for draft picks? And use that same kind of animation. I heard reports, not reports, but statements from people who were there. That they, it was better on TV than actually being part of it. I believe that. Although there was a guy that called our show today that said it was amazing. It was so much fun. Just being there? Yeah, and then one of the TV stations, there was a couple women that were mad because they were having a bachelorette party and they didn't realize the draft was going on. Well, who's, who's complaining? The bachelorette people? Yeah, the bachelorette people. Well, whose fault is that? Oh, it was just such a typical local news story. It was like, and not everyone was happy. All right, explain that to me. These girl, these women <coughs> had a bachelorette party. Right. Set up in in, uh, in Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. And probably for a year they had the date set up. Maybe. Okay. Uh, and the hotel did not say you might be might want to be aware of the fact the NFL draft is that weekend. Who cares? I mean, you don't, you're going to tell me you wouldn't have a fun. That wouldn't be a fun bachelorette that party. That would be a great bachelorette party. Oh. So what are they complaining about? Well, we were planning on having our bachelorette party, and then all of a sudden the NFL draft came to town, and we couldn't get into here. We couldn't do that. We couldn't do this. And we couldn't meet uh, eligible bachelors people? for the other people. Yeah, and that's a having six hundred thousand people there, testosterone flowing. You don't think? Yes, I, they were not happy. I think I read that on Deadspin. <laughs> I think it was on Deadspin story too. All right, so whose fault is that? The city of Nashville, the women, or the NFL? Oh, it's the NFL's fault. Just blame the NFL on this one. They'll take the rap for it. How about the kid who got shot? Is that unbelievable? You got to fill me in. I didn't. Somebody got shot at the draft. 
No, the, one of the players, the Giants drafted. Oh, 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 yeah, that's not what a good a story. story. I thought somebody got drafted. It's gonna be a good what job. a horrible story. All right, so what do you think of the draft? Well, <clears throat> I think when you look back at this draft, you're going to say this wasn't the the over-the-top draft that you know the Browns needed to become a Super Bowl contender, but they added the pieces they needed. They got someone to help out Denzel Ward immediately. Do they need high-profile people now? I don't think so. No, I think we're in a, I think we're in a really good spot right now. But I just need to see it together. You know, I feel like we have all the like we have a giant puzzle right now, and there's all these pieces sitting out there in front of you. I want to see what those pieces look like when they come together. I want to see what Odell Beckham Jr. looks like with Baker Mayfield. I want to see what would Greedy and Ward look like. I, I want to see how this defensive front's going to look. I want to see how the offensive line's going to look. I mean, there are a lot of things that we just don't know if those pieces are going to work out. You know who I wanted to see? Paris Campbell. You didn't get him. Didn't get him. Mm -mm. Again, they went against my theory, best Buckeye available. If you did that over the years, you know how good you'd be? Uh, the guys that we let go by? Yeah. yeah. Too many. Yeah, I'm not just saying pick them off, off a roster center. <coughs> I'm saying guys you actually had a chance to draft. Yeah. That goes back to my adults in the room conversation, though. Like, I didn't feel like they stretched or reached on anybody. Maybe kicker, fifth. Fifth round on a... Extra pick. They would have had they taken Simmons and let him sit for a year, be a redshirt freshman or whatever they call him in the NFL. That would have been a bad move. It would have been interesting. It was a tough call. I think he wanted to do it. You think you think Dar uh, Dorsey wanted to? Do I it? think Dorsey wanted to do it based on all the things that he had said going into it, or maybe he was just trying to drive up the price for him. I mean, he, maybe so. Do you? I wonder who the three players were that they were willing to go back up and get. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think I, we'll find out at some point, but I at this point. How about Takasaki? Or Taki Taki. Taki Taki had not talked to John Dorsey before or anybody else from the Browns. And he was in the bathroom. I well, when they called him, but he wasn't there when he when they were working out guys and at the combine and all that. How do you? How that do story's you, not as unusual as you think it is. I've heard that story more often than not. Well, for guys who say they do due diligence and they do so much research on these guys. I'm just surprised. I, I know they can find out what kind of player he is, that there are ways of doing that. But you would think he'd want to talk to him face-to-face. -face. You would also think that one of their coaches would have tipped him off. Uh, you would think the Browns had talked to the coaches or talked somebody. to somebody around him, yeah. and someone said, hey, I don't know what the Browns are looking at, but they're talking to us about you. Right. All right, we are done. You can uh, listen to Andy Baskin on Baskin and Phelps from 10 until 2 every Monday through Friday. I'll actually be there on Thursday yeah, with, yeah. Uh, with Andy. So we better go home and rehearse now. For yes, that. let's try that. That'll do it for us. Thanks to all of you. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.